North Korea continues to develop its nuclear program and is violating international sanctions by clandestinely transferring weapons and fuel, a confidential United Nations report said. The report said North Korea has not stopped its nuclear and missile programs and continued to defy Security Council resolutions to a massive increase in illicit ship-to-ship -ship transfers of petroleum products as well as through transfers of coal at sea during 2018. The isolated country attempted to sell weapons to the Houthi rebels in Yemen, according to the report. UN experts were shown a letter from a Houthi leader inviting the North Koreans to meet in the Syrian capital Damascus to discuss the issue of the transfer of technology and other matters of manual interest. Eight people have died in a Russian helicopter crash in northeastern Siberia. Russia's emergency minister and the MI-8 went down in Krasnovark's territory. All those on board, two crew members and 15 passengers were killed. The helicopter was reportedly taking workers to an oil station. An investigation is underway. Initial assessments have suggested that the aircraft's propeller blades struck cargo being carried by another helicopter just after takeoff. Eleven bodies were discovered in a Mexican town close to the U.S. border days before President-elect Andrew Manuel López Obrador is due to visit for a series of forums seeking to stern the violence in the country. The bodies of eight men and three women were found in the home in Ciudad Juarez, the government of the northern state of Chihuahua said in a statement. It said the people were victims of homicide. The incident may be related to clashes between criminal groups, the government added. The prosecutor's office is investigating the killings and identities of the victims. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo today said he hoped this part with Turkey will be resolved soon and pledged dollar $300 million security funding for Southeast Asia. He was speaking on the sidelines of the ASEAN Foreign Ministers' meeting in Singapore. He also said the United States has every intention to working cooperatively with NATO ally Turkey and that he hoped the issue of Americans detained there could not be resolved in coming days. Pompeo said he was expecting Russia to abide by UN Security Council resolutions on North Korea. To correct that, to adjust that. Israeli troops shot dead a Palestinian man and wounded at least 220 others at protests on the Gaza border. The official said a 25-year-old man had been killed and that of the 220 hurt, 90 suffered wounds as a result of live fire. At least 156 Palestinians have been killed in the protests and one Israeli soldier was shot dead by sniper in Gaza. North Korea on Thursday called for an all-out battle against record temperatures and has called on its citizens to help protect crops from drought in a country already grappling with tough international sanctions over its nuclear weapons program. The resulting drought has brought an unprecedented natural disaster, warning against crop damage that could savage its farm-reliant economy, battered by sanctions despite recent development over tears. Temperatures have topped a record 40 degrees Celsius in some regions, since late July and crops such as rice and maize have begun to show signs of damage. The Korean Peninsula is experiencing record temperatures and South Korea has reported 28 deaths from the heat. Celsius down 2.1 degrees from the record-breaking day before when it soared to its highest in. Journalists protested on the streets of Managua on Friday to demand the right to practice their jobs freely amidst reports of violence and intimidation directed at the Nicaraguan press. The Central American country has been racked in violence since April, which has reportedly killed some 300 people. Officials and groups loyal to the Southernista government of President Daniel Ortega have been accused of being behind the violence. Journalists reporting on the wave of violence taking place across the country against protesters claim they have been targeted to stay quiet. An intruder was gunned down while trying to enter the residence of former chief of Indian Kashmir, Farooq Abdullah, in Jammu city. Police said the intruder traveling in a car broke the security barricade and attempted to enter the Bhatindi residence of Abdullah. Security forces deployed there identified the breach and shot the person dead. The invader was being identified as Mufaz Shah. The inspector general of Jammu zone, S.D. Singh, said there has been an attempt of forced entry.
Police in Denmark fined a 28-year-old woman for wearing a full-face veil. The first time a punishment was meted out since it became illegal on Wednesday. According to the local media, police issued the fine in the city of Horsham after being called to a shopping center on Friday. The woman in the veil encountered another female who tried to tear it off, resulting in a minor scuffle. Police officers said during the fight, a veil came off, but by the time they arrived, she had put it back on again. The woman was fined $1.56 for wearing a full-face veil in public and asked to either take the garment off or leave the shopping center. She chose to leave. Students for the seventh day took position on city streets and are controlling traffic systems as part of the demand safe force this morning. Hundreds of students took position at Shabak intersection since morning and were controlling traffic and checking license on the roads. They made a human chain while chanting slogans with placards in hands. Some of them were also seen controlling traffic. Students took position at Manikme Avenue as well demanding safe roads. They are only letting go to the ambulances and vehicles with emergency patients. Meanwhile, people across the country, including Dhaka, are facing an ordeal on the roads as transport workers continue their undeclared strike today due to the ongoing student movement. No long-distance bus left or entered Dhaka through Gaptoli, Saidabad and airport roads. Awami League General Secretary Obaidul Kadeh today said BNP has capitalized the students' movement for anti-government agenda. He said this after meeting held at the party president's office at Dhanmundi. He claimed the opposition wants to create chaos in the logical movement. He added the government has found 100% rationality amongst the demands of the students. He urged the students to return to their classes with the assurance of fulfilling all their demands. BNP Standing Committee member Barrister Modu Ahmed said that if government tries to fall student movement, the mass people should rise up against it. BNP Standing Committee member Barrister Modu Ahmed said this at the discussion at the National Press Club. He said the students do not stop the movement because their nine-point demand will not be implemented. Meanwhile, BNP Senior Joint Secretary General Rul Kobi Rizvi claimed BC leaders and activists wore school uniforms and created problems on the roads. He said this at a press conference at the party's central office in Neupolton. He also alleged that the government is behind the people's sufferings. Education Minister Nurul Islam Nahi today has urged protesters demanding safer roads and to be patient and call off their demonstrations. The minister made the remarks during the convocation ceremony of Silat Metropolitan University this morning. He said that the government has accepted all of the students' demands. Nahid said that the protest movement was also supported by the Minister of Education and that the ministry would maintain pressure in order to ensure that killer drivers will be brought to justice. The education minister said he was hopeful that students would slowly begin to return to their homes. Dhaka Metropolitan Police Commissioner Asadu Zamanmiya urged the students to return to their classrooms and said now is the time to end their movement as everyone is recognizing the rationale of their movement. He made the announcement at a news conference today. He thanked the students for performing the heavy tasks which police failed to do. He said the traffic rules will be strengthened and an amendment to the existing road transport law will bring harsher punishments to the errant drivers. Asadu Zaman Mia said that certain groups are now out to divert the students' movement to other directions to realize their vested interests. He said intelligence reports, social media posts and information from different sources indicate the evil attempt. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina today handed over five government buses to show the Ramijuddin Cantonment School and College. Authorities that she has promised to give to the students' families who died in the road accident at airport on Sunday. This morning, BRTC Chairman Farid Ahmed Buya handed over one two-decker bus, three single-decker buses and a 30-seat coaster to the students and college authorities in the morning. At that time, the president, principal teachers and students of Shoid Ramizuddin College were present. Ramizuddin College teachers and students thanked the Prime Minister for providing the transport. Information Minister Hassanul Haq Inu has said that the government has taken stern steps to implement the nine-point demand for student movement. 
He said this while responding to questions from reporters on the comment of BNP leader Modud Ahmed at a meeting with the hospital management and providing ambulances at Kushtia's Mirpur Upasila Health Complex. He said BNP does not want to understand that the government has solved the problem. They are trying to create fuss with this issue again. <laughs> Jatiyo Party Chairman Hussain Mohammad Ershad has strongly criticized the government's silent role addressing the transport strikes across the country. He said that the country cannot run like this. They must be brought under control. He said this at a public meeting at the Supreme Court auditorium in the morning. Meanwhile, Jatiyo Party Secretary General Ruhul Amin Haulada urged the government to take lessons from the present situation.